My name is Cody. I was born in the early morning in a state of Connecticut, United States. From the moment I was born, unfortunately, my parents were never together. For the first few years of my life, I lived in an apartment with my mom and her boyfriend. I don't have many memories of them because I was so young, but I remember watching people play PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 on the TV, thinking it was the coolest thing ever. This was also when I got my Nintendo Game Boy, the Pikachu Gold Edition, as a gift, and it was just biblical. The only memories I have then of my parents, they were just constantly arguing. They never really were a great match. When I was about four years old, my mother had a sister with her boyfriend at the time. I was so excited to have a sister and I'm almost certain that I got to help pick out her name. My elementary schools were a bit rough because I was always going back and forth between my parents' house. My mother had main visitation and it was tough because I really loved being at my dad's. Around age six, my grandmother's life partner was kind enough to allow my father to live there with him and this is where I was first introduced to computers and computer games. I instantly fell in love with even playing around with pinball or simple flash games like Pajama Sam and Putt Putt. I spent hours with my dad playing around on these old dial-up dinosaur PCs. I'll try and do my best not to overshare because my childhood was kinda rough. My parents being apart meant that I had very limited time with my father and I never got along with my mother that well. My mother had me at a very young age of 18, so it's hard to expect anyone that young to be perfect. Throughout my childhood, I would constantly be moving from apartment to apartment, almost on an annual basis. Lots of early memories I have are people arguing. My mom and her boyfriend, or my mom and my dad. My mom had a very short temper and was very controlling over me. She would use time with my dad as leverage to win arguments because of how the CT court systems would always side with her no matter how hard my dad would try. My dad spent countless hours in court just trying to see me more. My dad was always so loving and the polar opposite of my mom. I had 20 times more freedom and I always felt like I could just simply be myself at his house. I remember I would count down the days until it was finally my dad's visitation times. I still love Wednesdays more than any other day because it makes me remember how happy I was to see my dad. I always felt like I could never be myself around my mom. Whenever I did anything weird or cringe, her way of dealing with it was just to yell in my face or humiliate me. One time at school, the teachers noticed I was pulling my hair out from a nervous habit and told my mom out of concern. Her way of dealing with it was to shave off all of my hair which completely exposed the bald spot. Kids at school made fun of me for a very long time. My mom would constantly try and say my dad was doing everything wrong and try to control every aspect of my life. She threatened to call a lawyer on my dad when he got me my very first cat, Kitty, rest in peace, because she was allergic to cats and said I was too. I'm not. Basically, the first chapter of my life was pretty rough. I felt very alone and frustrated. I was this spastic kid full of energy, but my mom would rarely let me leave the house. Most of the time after school was spent in after school programs, which is basically grown up daycare. And then basically every day she would just be shopping from store to store, buying things and returning things that we didn't need or couldn't afford. And one night around this age, I got really sick and was throwing up. I was frozen in fear and I was too afraid to get out of bed and tell my mom that I messed the carpet up. I sat there in a panic all night. I was too young to realize my behavior, but I started doing weird things that I thought would avoid me getting sick again. I would purposely skip wearing the pair of pajama pants I wore the night that I got sick. I wouldn't eat anything that I ate the day that I got sick ever again. I would be so afraid to sleep at a family member's house that I got sick at because I thought it would happen again. This made every time that I got sick after just a nightmare because it would bring me back to that night of fear. During elementary school, I constantly felt like I couldn't fit in. I had some core friends, but I always felt out of place and never wanted to be at school. There really isn't a way that I can portray the feeling that I had, but the closest thing that I could think of a feeling was just being alone. I always wanted to be one of the cool kids, but it always seemed the harder I tried, the more weird people thought I was. Around fourth grade, I remember playing games like Club Penguin and RuneScape on the school and library computers. And this was also when my friends and I would watch videos on Google Video, right before YouTube was even created. I'll always remember the crowd of kids watching this 15 second soccer viral fail video and thinking how cool it was that people liked watching it. Almost all the free time I had from then on at my dad's house was spent trying to learn 
to make glitch tutorial videos for Club Penguin and some cringy music videos. I was such a freaking nerd. I managed to use this cheat program in Club Penguin and get my penguin to 1 million coins, which was the maximum you could even get in the game. Shortly after that, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 came out. I spent days at my friend's house playing split screen Halo 3 and SSX Tricky. Video games and the computer was the only thing I wanted to do at this age. In middle school or around age 11, I finally started to get more freedom. I moved to a new town and got new friends. I got my first girlfriend. I remember she would always wear this necklace that was made up of a bunch of monster energy can tabs. During 6th and 7th grade, I had such good times riding my BMX bike around with my friends and I spent two whole summers trying to learn a kickflip. Trying so hard to learn this kickflip and I only ended up landing it four times. This was also when I got a dog, Oscar, a brown wiener dog or a dachshund. I loved taking that little guy on walks every day and he would spin around in a circle whenever I was about to give him a treat. And around this time, I either caught a really bad stomach flu or ate something seriously bad. I remember after that, I started to eat way less thinking it would lower my chances of throwing up again. I would skip lunch and ask my friends for their fries or their chips and never realize that it was a problem at all. This caused me to also be afraid of sleeping at my dad's house because that's where I last got sick. My dad would drive me back and forth 30 minutes on his visitation time just so I could see him and still be comfortable. I was in therapy and tried medicine, but nothing ever seemed to make it better. I eventually got over sleeping there and it was around that time that I turned 12 and was finally able to write a letter to the court to come live with my dad full time. I'll never forget writing the letter and pouring my heart out to the point where my mother thought I didn't even write it myself. The judge granted my dad full custody and I moved in with him shortly after. Leaving my dog and my sister behind was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I hated knowing my sister being younger than me still had to deal with how my mom was. I can't continue without at least giving my mother some credit. She wasn't a deadbeat mom who didn't care at all. I just don't think she was ready for the responsibility at her age, let alone for two children and then three dogs on top of it. I know that she loves me and I love her too. We just never really got along that well. Very shortly after moving back to my hometown, my life felt fantastic. I had about half of my 8th grade year left and then it was summer. My childhood friends were all coincidentally the stoner kids of course and I was completely against weed or any drugs at all. I remember hating on my friends saying they're gonna die. And then one day in health class everything changed. I remember watching this video going over drugs and 90% of it made complete sense. Don't smoke crack, don't shoot heroin, easy stuff. But when it got to the spooky marijuana, it just said it can ruin your life. I went home that day and figured out on the computer that it really wasn't that bad at all. I apologized to my friends and asked to try it. I got one of their friends to sell me a gram of weed in this little gray treasure chest. On the last day of 8th grade, summer vacation finally began and it was the first day I ever really smoked and felt what weed was like. From the very first moment, it was like all the worries and frustration of my childhood just went away and for the first time in years, I felt full of joy. I danced around the parking lot looking like a crazy person, laughing at the top of my lungs. I thought from that moment that I want to do this every day for the rest of my life. My love for cannabis was born. This was also peak Modern Warfare 2 days. It was then that my dad got me a Dazzle HD recorder so I could record my gameplay to make videos. I quickly realized that the Dazzle is garbage and I sold my iPod Touch to be able to afford the Hapog HD PVR. At the time, this was one of the only ways to get HD quality on your gameplay videos on YouTube, and you were cool if you had one. I watched people like Woody's Gamertag, Whiteboy 7 Street, Hutch, and so many other creators that got me inspired just from the fact that they could talk about something while playing video games and people enjoyed watching it. I tried for a few years and never really got more than a few hundred views per video. And half of those were just from spamming my most recent player list on Xbox. So here's where the fun begins. At the end of middle school, I realized something that I didn't even need to pass middle school to move on to high school. 
so I bombed all of my grades and finished the year off with straight Fs. This lazy attitude got me immediately placed into a special education program day one of high school. This also meant that I was the only freshman, which is the first year of high school, in the entire class. It took me a while, but I made some friends that were way older than me and had more experience with knowing how to have fun. On day one of high school, I left the tour of the school with a friend and went to go smoke a cigarette across the street. I'd be here for days if I were to tell you how crazy my high school experience was, but it was full of me just not giving a shit. I never wanted to be there and I just always do the bare minimum to pass. Almost on a weekly basis, I would get in-school suspension because I was constantly leaving school on camera to go and smoke cigarettes. It got to the point where the school started calling the cops and my friends and I, and we had them looking for us all over town. I just always had this feeling that I would never need to know anything that they were teaching me in school beyond basic reading and writing skills, which I felt I already had. I would fall asleep frequently, and the only thing that would keep the time going was staring at the Social Blade live subscriber count on my phone. I will always remember getting 50 subscribers in one day and freaking out. This was also about the time where I started to sell Bud. I realized how expensive it was and how none of my friends and I had jobs or even wanted jobs. I did have one job at a bakery section of a grocery store, but that only lasted about four shifts before I walked out and quit. So I would buy Bud and pinch the bags and flip it into more and smoke the profit. I'd also sell cigarettes for one dollar each and end up with just enough so my friends and I could still smoke. I started with pinching bags and ripping off the rich football players and eventually moved up to this guy affronting me a half pound at a time. The anxiety of getting caught was scary, but I absolutely loved being the bud connection for all my friends. Now if only instead of smoking all the profit, I put the profit into fucking Bitcoin. Halfway through high school, during the summer vacation, is when I got arrested. I went to a week-long party without telling my dad where I was. The cops were looking for me and they were really pissed off when they finally found me. I had 10 grams of weed and a grinder, got charged with both within a school zone. I went to juvenile detention for nine days and ended up with six months of probation and some house arrest time. During house arrests, I was so bored and all I could think about was smoking weed with my friends. This was also when I started to switch up my commentary video topics from random topics to weed stories or anything weed related. I'll always remember uploading the first time smoking weed video and it getting a thousand views within a couple days. It was from that moment that I was hooked on YouTube and tried making as many videos as I could. I didn't have much success at first. It took me over a year of constant uploads to reach a thousand subscribers. And when I reached a thousand, I was so inspired that I spent almost all of my free time learning how to improve my videos and become a real YouTuber. During the six months of probation, there were some really dark times. This was when I first started to drink alcohol and even got into the bad habit of smoking synthetic weed or K2. I would drink Four Locos with my friends and then when school started, we all started smoking K2 every day after school. I saw some of my friends have seizures and we would all freak out every day. It was just hell. I remember feeling like a crazy drug addict and it scared the shit out of me and thankfully one day, I just stopped it. That was easily one of the biggest regrets in my life and I can't imagine the damage those mystery chemicals did to my body. And the and the crazy part is, is I never failed the drug test during probation too. And that just blew my mind every time. My heart would be racing peeing in that cup thinking I was going to go back to juvie because there was no way that this crazy stuff we were smoking wouldn't show up on the test. But it never did. On a positive note, this is also when I first tried psychedelics like magic mushrooms and LSD. I'll always remember these experiences impacting the way that I think about everything. I was definitely way too young to fully grasp the experiences, but I truly can't even put in words how mystical those times were. Who knows if it was a positive or a negative. When probation was finally over, I quickly went back to smoking weed and it honestly felt way different than I remember. Almost like it lost its magic. I never had a problem before getting arrested, but now when I smoke, I would freak out very similar to how K2 felt. It messed with me for a while and I almost stopped smoking entirely. 
Thankfully, smoking became more enjoyable, but it never seemed to be the same as it once was. At this point, I was way too afraid to start selling weed again because I didn't want to get arrested. At the end of high school, I maybe had around 10,000 or 20,000 subscribers on YouTube, and it was my main focus. I would rush off the bus every day to go make a video. This was also when my anxiety got really bad and going to school started to become a problem. I would frequently feel like I lost my breath walking down the halls and I would constantly worry about getting sick at school. The phobia of throwing up intensified and it got to the point where I would shake in the morning before going in. Finally, I gave up and ended up dropping out two weeks into my senior year, which is the last year of high school. I was disappointed that I didn't finish and looking back on it, I kind of wish that I did. But I know how I felt then and it just wasn't worth it to me. And I don't dwell on the decision that I made at all. I'm not gonna lie, when I first dropped out, the only thing I was doing was playing old school RuneScape and occasionally making videos. I didn't start taking YouTube very seriously until about 2015. Once I figured out somewhat of a format for videos, I just kept going and going. I had so many crazy stories about running from cops, getting caught, smoking weed, getting suspended from school. It was so cool to me that people even enjoyed hearing it. And the fact that I could even make a few dollars off of it was mind blowing. In 2016, my channel really started to kick off. I, I'm pretty sure I was around 100,000 subscribers and I, would, I told my dad and my grandpa and they were thrilled for me. It was only a few hundred dollars a month, but it was coming from something I truly loved doing, and they knew that. Getting the 100,000 subscriber creator award was one of the best days of my life. It was truly a childhood dream come true. After high school, things definitely started to slow down a little in my life. When I turned 18, I realized that I couldn't be running from the cops and doing crazy shit because I'd end up in actual prison. I started staying home way more and focusing on YouTube as much as I could. Around this time I was also dealing with a breakup that really shattered my heart. It took me a long time to mentally recover from that, but making videos really helped me move on. For the next few years, other than my channel doubling in subscriber count, my life was very calm. My dad would constantly be on my ass about doing something with my life, because honestly I was pretty lazy. Other than making YouTube videos and playing games with friends, I didn't really do much. It got to a point where I would say no to my friends because I just wanted to stay home and focus on making videos and learning how to make them better. I spent a few years isolating myself and grinding on YouTube and my channel started doing really well. I think it was a positive because it got me away from the crazy life that I had in high school, but a negative because mentally I felt really alone and my phobia of throwing up just got worse. This made it really hard for me to leave my house that much or travel far distances. And eventually my friends just stopped even asking me if I wanted to go places because they knew I would just say no. I still have a couple core friends from high school and I'm grateful that they're, they're understanding of this, but I, I definitely lost a few because of it. I've been working to get past it for a very long time and it's, it's hard for me to explain it into words or illustrate how, how I feel exactly because I've been working on getting past this phobia for a long time. And it's hard for me to explain in words or illustrate how I feel exactly. And I know that the fear is irrational. I've always been afraid of telling you guys this because I wanted you to think I was just some chill dude on the internet. But everyone has their own battles. This phobia has held me back from a lot of experiences and adventures in my life. Getting sick away from home is the equivalent of skydiving into a pit of spiders for me. That's always been the best way I could describe it. Pure fight or flight response with no real escape. Every day I'm working to get past it and I don't want you thinking my life is completely negative because I couldn't be more happy to be in the position that I'm in. Being a YouTuber is beyond my wildest dreams of what I could be doing with my life. Time is flying by and I can't believe that I'm 26 years old. I can't believe that my YouTube channel has over 900,000 subscribers. I'm proud of myself for accomplishing this, but the best part about it is when I read a comment or a direct message that my videos in some way positively impacted someone's life. I always wanted to create something that brought people joy or entertainment ever since I was a kid because of how lonely I felt growing up. It makes me so happy to read comments saying it feels like I'm talking with a friend because I know what it's like to not have any. 
I spent years of my life feeling alone and feeling like I would never meet someone to spend my life with, but that changed almost a year ago. One of my best friends talked me into using some dating apps and I got extremely lucky. And the very first girl that I met turned out to be the love of my life. I'm beyond happy to share this with you, but I'm engaged to this beautiful girl. The past year has definitely been one of the best so far. I not only met the girl of my dreams, but I also achieved one of my biggest life goals. And for a few of those years, I got to live in a house. I used to feel like owning a house was so impossible because my family never had a lot of money. And it's all thanks to you guys for watching my videos that I'm writing this in the sunroom of my very own house. There's a few memories that I'd like to share that I couldn't exactly fit into the story that impacted my life a lot. My grandparents and aunt and uncles gave me wonderful memories as a kid. My aunt showed me the movie The Goonies, which sparked my inspiration for adventure and helps make me the person I am today. My uncle helped me catch my first fish and definitely helped shape my sense of humor. My grandfather has taught me many lessons throughout life and always has been super supportive of my videos and goals. He also brought me on a vacation to St. John Virgin Islands, which I'll remember forever. My grandma gave me so many great memories like going out to eat and some fun trips like Cape Cod and Vermont. My family has always made me feel very loved and I'm so grateful to have them in my life. If I had one bit of advice for you watching this or listening to this video, it's to never give up on your dreams. And I know that's really cliche, but in reality, there is nothing stopping you from doing absolutely anything that you want to do besides your own mind. Never let anyone, even your closest friends and family, deter you from what you truly want to do in your life. The greatest lesson that I've ever learned is that you can never make everyone happy and true happiness comes from being yourself and making a positive impact on others. And because I know that my grandfather is probably watching this, save as much money as you can.